plan for today is that with the cold weather coming on, I thought it made sense to go out and do some foraging of wild edibles before you know they get covered in snow. Uh, I have obviously all my preps uh, in you know, my pantry, but there's no reason to go diving into those if there's you know free food for the foraging you know out here. The only problem with that is that the foraging grounds are kind of kind of far from my house, and uh, I feel a little bit uncomfortable you know for security reasons leaving leaving my house, uh, we're really getting into that time period where we might start to expect, you know, looters or, you know, wandering desperate people to be coming and, you know, just looking for shit. So uh, I, what I worked out with my neighbor, Warren, is that he's going to come and kind of position himself roughly between our houses, keep an eye on things back here, and I'm going to split half of the, the wild uh, foraging stuff that I'm able to get uh, with him. So uh, he, he should be over here in a couple minutes. Uh, while I'm waiting, I figured I'd mention just about yesterday, I listened to the shortwave radio for a while. I didn't hear any any human people signals. The only thing I heard was just that weird, creepy <laughs> sounding thing. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert. It didn't sound like the normal kind of shortwave radio static and stuff. Uh, well, here's a, here's a nice clean recording of what I was able to find. <laughs> All right, so Warren's holding down the fort, and we're gonna head out into the the woods and find some some food. I'm whispering a little because uh, I don't know. I asked Warren if he wanted to be on camera, and uh, now he didn't say it outright, but I. I got the impression he thinks me doing these videos is kind of, uh, stupid, maybe, <laughs> a little bit, I don't know, I think it's a good sanity kind of uh, thing, you know, it's like doing a diary, except uh, more technological, more prone to being destroyed by EMP pulse, <laughs> I don't know, it gives me something to do. Uh, one of the nice things about our uh, location here is that there are kind of two swamps on either side of our street and uh, that's going to kind of funnel people. They're either going to come up from the, the main road end or the forest end. We're in a dead end so Warren has a pretty good sense of where to expect people to come from because they're not likely to be cutting right through a swamp. Uh, but uh, I'm sure everything will be fine. Just got to be careful. Well, here's something. I'm not going to collect this but uh, this is a uh, hemlock. Hemlock you can uh, read the noodles off of it. This stuff right here. Uh, I understand that they've got a lot of uh, vitamin C in them. They don't taste bad. It tastes like a Christmas tree. I'm not going to collect it though because that stuff stays up and fresh all, all winter long. Plus it's so tiny. It's like, who cares? Uh, yeah, uh, through here there's a, uh, a clearing. The best wild edibles usually exist in clearings. You don't f usually find a lot in the, the forest understory down here. I mean, there's some stuff, but you get the best stuff in disturbed sites, you know, open sunny places, things like that. You know, one thing, I haven't seen any, uh, haven't seen any alien anything since, uh, I guess since that big one flew over the house the other day and dropped all those tiny little whatevers out the bottom of, of it. It's been pretty quiet. As far as I know, Warren and I are the only two living things existing on this planet anymore. I doubt that that's true, but uh, it's the way it feels right now. It's just Warren and I and the birds and stuff. All right, well, I'm going to cut right through here, and then we're going to be uh, in the fields. Uh, here's a yarrow plant. This is, you know, it's not going to be food here. You can recognize them, these flower clusters at the top. It's really feathery leaves. Make sure you don't confuse these with Queen Anne's lace, which is a very, a very toxic plant. <laughs> you don't want to go eating Queen Anne's lace. Uh, but these guys here, they got the feathery leaves. This stuff is good medicinally, but it's also just good as a, like for a tea or something like that in the winter. And it's gonna, you're gonna get the nutrients out of that. I wouldn't go gobbling it up, you know, just, uh, just as is. Tastes kind of gross. You could, you could. What is that? Oh, it's a bee. Am I desperate enough to start eating bees? Probably not. Not yet. So, I'm gonna put that in the bag. That's some good stuff. 
Oh, and there's some more yarrow right there. There's some good leaves. And, oh, here's something here. This is good. This is, uh, I think it's some kind of a, an oregano. Maybe it's gone, gone feral from someone's yard or an old farm or something like that. Uh, the best way to tell this whole family of plants is that uh, this is a mint family plant, and all mint family plants have these squarish stems. If you kind of hold the stem and roll it in your your fingers, you can feel that it's 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 not round. It's a it's a square going all the way up, and they also have these uh, alternating leaves that, that go in one direction and then the next leaves go in the other direction and they alternate as they go up. It's really uh, obvious in something like basil, which is also another mint family plant. But these guys here are going to be great. I'm going to grab these and dry these out. And, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good seasoning. And also it is, uh, you know, there's health benefits of eating all these leaves. I wouldn't go nibbling them right off because it's a really strong flavor, but I can add that to lots of things, soups and things like that, and I'll be able to get the nutrients from this. More lawn area here. Oh yeah, this is what we came for, this kind of stuff. Check it out. This right here is plantain, and I'm sure you've probably seen these before. They've got these little, uh, see that little fiber coming through? They've got these really strong veins that run through the leaves and they send up a stalk with a bunch of little flowers on them. This is good stuff. This isn't, what we found kind of so far is a lot of uh, like aromatic stuff, you know, you use for teas or flavoring, but this stuff is actual food. So we're gonna grab these guys. Yeah, some more over here. Get kind of the fresher, fresher ones. Now I can cook these up uh, or, uh, you know, just eat them fresh, just like this, either way. I'm just gonna throw them in the bag. I've got over here, this is a, this is a type of, yeah, it's a type of wild lettuce. I'm not as familiar with that though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that be. I believe that's wild lettuce, but if you're not really certain about it, you don't wanna go risking your life. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, here's some dandelions. Everyone's pulling dandelions out of their yard, but that's food. We've got dandelion. Dandelions don't taste that great but they're food. A lot of nutrients in there. These were intentionally brought over from Europe because the European settlers thought they were so useful. They're also good as a digestive aid. Dandelions. Oh, and here, oh, these are nice. This is a different type of plantain. These are really easy to identify. These are very common. These leaves are great. I'm just gonna place the camera down here. You can see what I'm talking about when you pull these things apart they've got those those fibers in there it's a it's a very um, obvious sign of what you've got here plantains really good you can eat the, the roots of these too maybe I don't know I'm not, I'm not gonna go digging roots today but uh you can eat all the parts of this plant the plantain plant not to be confused with the like, banana like plantains that's a completely different thing okay so those go in the bag too the way that I got into wild edibles was a few years ago I just started learning a few at a time and you might think that you know you run a risk of poisoning yourself that way but really there are some very easy ones to identify and once you become comfortable with those you don't have to really worry about uh, you know toxic plants as long as you stick to what you know and then I just added to my knowledge over time. Uh, yeah, what is that? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's those, that's those little, little fucking things, okay. Um, I, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna get the hell out of here, cause I don't, uh, I don't know what's going on right now, I'm just gonna get back to the house. I'm trying to be a little quiet, cause, uh, a few of those little probe things or whatever, they uh, they just flew overhead. And uh, you can just kind of see through the trees there. I saw a few fly over and uh, they headed back for the house. So I'm just trying to go back quietly. I don't know, hopefully they just flew over. 
it's getting kind of, kind of, uh, well, this, this sort of sucks, I guess. I have a, uh, I have a Glock on me, but that's like for crazy people. It's not for, uh, fucking alien probes. They're not that big though, they're like, I don't know, they look like the size of a beach ball or something. I should stop talking. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.